So let's go ahead and run through a, uh, a quick explanation of what this project is and, and what it looks like and really how it's put together might uh, I think it's always handy to kind of take a look at a line diagram so this is very simplistic and a little bit brutalistic um, we're doing a dual field coil today and what a dual field coil is th this is for specifically my purpose for pulse induction um, it is really broken down to two monocoils put in series with each other. So we have a larger coil on the outside and a smaller one on the inside. And these are in series with each other. Off here to the left, I've boxed out the detector head end, right? And here we start with our outer coil and I wound them clockwise, okay? So my outer coil was uh, 14 turns. So we go 14 times around, and then we bring that piece right into making up the smaller coil. And my smaller coil was 10 turns around in a clockwise direction. And after the 10th turn, it comes back out and heads back off to the detector. Now you might have noticed this resistor symbol here. So this project, a dual field coil, it not only has dual coils, it also has dual damping resistors. So this damping resistor is for the inner coil. And the way I figured out the value is I took the inner coil onto itself and attached it, just the inner coil, to my um, pulse induction detector. In this case, I used a hammerhead. You can use whatever you want to use for pulse induction detector. I attached it to my hammerhead along with my damping resistor jig. Um, you, may have seen my videos on damping resistor jigs and how to use them and that's how i figured out my damping resistor value in my case it was 510 ohms so we attach this uh, in parallel across the coil and then once both the coils are um, attached together everything's wired up we reattach the coil to the detector again along with a damping resistor jig and we figure out the final damping resistor value. Okay, so once again we have two damping resistors here. Um, the other green wires here, these are the uh, wires that connect our shield material back to the ground reference wire okay so uh, I didn't illustrate the shield on here but I'm telling you what these green wires are now uh, as you'll see in the project in the video I used um, copper foil tape to shield both my coils and I embed underneath the copper foil tape a very thin braided bare copper drain wire and one for the outer coil, one for the inner coil, and we bring them back and attach them to this uh, ground reference wire here. Okay, that is what that is. So it's, it's quick and dirty. A uh, very simple diagram, but very, uh, I think, informative of how to make this project. All right, guys, here's the first part of a project that I'm going to be getting into shortly. And I'm looking to make a dual field coil for pulse induction use. 
you can see the coil shell here um, you can see the rough dimension presented by the ruler and I'm getting ready to pour some um, epoxy and what I have is is these little plastic uh, stiffeners I like to put them inside the uh, the uh, where the coil ears are the clevis and add some I think structural stability to it rather than just having the epoxy in there so that's what we have and we'll we'll progress from here okay so here's my uh, template for the coil forming you can see I've, I've put the ring of nails for the inner portion of the dual dual field and I did uh, I think 20 turns you can see the resulting coil on the left um, next up is the outer coil and I'll show you what the inductance looks like on my my little tester here next and it's it came out fairly accurately I'll show you what the coil calculator looks like and we'll go from there so here's the um, induction reading and we, so we have 120 micro henry's it's actually exactly what I was looking at and many thanks to George Overton and, and his coil calculator from Geotech Forum okay so this is the reading of the larger coil the the outer coil and I'll give you a shot of what it looks like on the form so I know I did mention that I would review the coil calculator so let's run through uh, figuring out what the larger of the two coils will be for um, micro Henry's so the inner radius of my large coil is 122.23 millimeters the wire thickness 0 0.541 that's inclusive of insulation and I had 14 turns and we simply hit calculate so 152 micro Henry's mine came out to 150 micro Henry's and that was prior to me taping it up and uh, really solidifying it after the fact it, it jumped up to 160 micro Henry's which was perfect for my uh, usage in my project um, the coil calculator is available for free to download from the geotech forum website it was kindly um, put together and offered by George Overton it's a, a great addition and a real time saver in making coils so here's a shot of the outer coil still on the form I need to uh, tape it a little bit then then pull it off and remeasure it and hopefully it maintains its reading of 150 micro Henry's so here's a shot of the coil um, semi-finished I'd call it the uh, the two disparate parts of the coil they're not connected yet but they're in place they, they fit nicely inside the coil shell and the outer coil actually once I got it a little bit taped it increased um, up to 160 micro Henry's so we'll see what it looks like in the final condition shortly okay this is just a little bit of a progress shot um, to show you where I am in the, in the project uh, so you can see I've formed both the coils I have wrapped them in copper foil and this is the type of copper foil that I, I used it's uh, 
conductive on both sides it's sticky on one side and also conductive on that same side so have that wrapped and but prior to adhering the the copper foil I ran this material over the coil now this is available from Davis Instruments and it's it's, it's basically a plastic tube with a slot all the way down the side and it's meant for sheathing um, metal cabling on boats so that's what I'm using as the spacer in between the coil and the shield so this is a final shot of the coil before I go ahead and set it in epoxy um, I have the inner damping resistor in place. I'll try to give you a close-up shot of that. And don't pay too much attention to the connections. I'll show you that in a diagram. The uh, What I used for damping resistor was 510 ohms. Uh, you can see it's a, a little bit blackened. I got a little bit of candle soot on it when I was doing the shrink connection so that's what that looks like I will show you the diagram next